Welcome everyone to um, what is this? <laughs> to my Facebook Live where I invited Tenacious T. I have a hard time calling her by her given name, which I believe is Tosh. Because yes, it's Tasha. <laughs> a good friend and business owner. She runs Taste by Tosh. Uh, feel free to give me a couple of minutes. Uh, what is Taste by Tosh? So people can know. So it actually started out with me just humbly asking people for business like, hey, I know how to cook. I can do your meal preps. And meal prep was not moving the way that I wanted it to move. But other people started to ask, well, what about catering? And I'm like, oh, OK, I can do your small party. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of moved into like niche caterings. So, you know, you and I both are in the same dance circle. So it like morphed into doing some catering for um, small festivals, admin. Okay. Um, and now it's boomeranging back to meal prep. So now I'm starting to get more people here and there wanting me to do meal prep for like for their parents. So I had uh, someone who needed like something specific for um, some some seniors uh, who were on a specific diet. So yeah, um, catering for small events, meal prep is the mission. And if you're nice to me, I can do some desserts and other things too. Um, and I'm always open to some conversations because I can do a lot of different things. Fantastic. Um, which is perfect. You're a small business owner um, looking to expand. And uh, which is the reason that I reached out to you. It occurred to me that, well, I'm giving you the principle that the premise behind this interview and I want to do these more often, which is bring on a business owner, answer their questions, basically give a consultation and mm -hmm. through the process of that, answering other people's questions because one person's questions invariably is the same question that many other people have. Um, and so I serve you, I'll serve the greater community, uh, anybody that watches this video, but on top of that, and this is the big lesson that I wanted to give everyone, the big um, idea, is this helps create content. Because it's very difficult for people to sit down and think of ideas to write. What am I going to write about? What am I going to do? And the internet, all your marketing, uh, depends on the content that you create. Um, what, what better way to create it than through the questions that someone is asking you live? I actually do this for a handful of clients. They record one or two, some, I got one guy that sometimes records like five Facebook lives every week. He brings on people. Um, he's an attorney. So people are asking him questions and he, he's basically giving all this free advice. Mm -hmm. and I then grab that video and we chop it up. We create uh, two, three, four minute videos and then we create reels essentially. Um, oh, that's all my questions. I was going to ask about that. And, and we can dig into it. I wanted to give the basic premise and why I'm doing this. One is to serve and two is self-serving in that I will also get more content that I can hand to my team, chop it up into little pieces and put it out into the internet. Mm -hmm. And that's the strategy. You don't have, it's, it's hard for me to, to sit down and create content uh, and write it. And I want, then I want it to be perfect. So quick story about Tosh. About a year ago, I asked her, said, do you have any questions? And she said, yes. She's as she is all the time. She gave me like 20 questions. And I started to create videos around each question. But then the perfectionist in me started to write scripts and started, it became a nightmare to actually put together and, and put out. This is going to be much easier. I wasn't even nervous, before, as I was telling you, Tosh, before this, this call. Before any live, I'm typically nervous, even though I, I think I'm pretty good at it. I think I know my stuff, but I get nervous because I had to create basically a bunch of ideas around the content and what I'm going to talk about. But knowing that you're going to ask me the questions, I can talk about it. Right. And this, I think, is a phenomenon that we need to leverage as, as individual business owners. If somebody asks you a question about your business, you can probably talk about it. But if you put a camera in front of you and you're like, now talk about it on your own, you have to sit there and like come up with the script and the idea that's a little more involved. This allows us to create content quickly. And then if depending on how long it is, every question could be its own video. 
right? Oh, yeah. Right? Okay. So that's, that's, that's the basic premise. And you see these on uh, the reels and TikToks. Um, and we'll talk about it more in depth in a second. But then you can chop them up into one minute, 30 second clips that you can then post on all your uh, all your social media platforms. That's why you make the big books and I wash the lettuce. This, okay. Hey, so tenacious, tell me what you got for me. What questions can I answer for you? I have a total of 37 questions. No, I don't have 37. <laughs> it's more like 19. That's still quite yeah. See what we got. I, I, I'll be um, oh. <laughs> um, I, and, and I actually have a, a question from someone within the dance community, a question straight out of Oklahoma City. Oklahoma. Okay. Did you want me to start with that one? And start wherever you want. It's, it's absolutely um, it's irrelevant. Just go. Let's go. Okay, cool. So Cindy out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, she was um, curious to know if you had any suggestions about the best ways to advertise and promote dance events and i would also add to that specifically um when your community is small uh how to promote to promote dance events especially if your community is small that's going to be tough depending on how small the community is because there's just a reality to it all geographically speaking depending on the population of where you're at that you're going to be limited uh, as to how many people you can expose to your dance event, your message, and actually pull from. Does that make sense? Whereas sense. W has a few million people, we have a lot of people that we can pull into the community. That's a big pool of people. Um, in Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, you ha you have to take into account how many people are there. I'm sure it's 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 not the smallest city. I've talked to someone who had like maybe a hundred thousand people in their in their town that's hard right because yeah. uh not everyone's even going to be interested in dance much less that style kizomba right in urban kids uh because i know obviously for people watching this <laughs> my best recommendation is to and it's going to be hard it's the best you can do given the reality of your circumstance which is run ads and promote i i almost 100 percent of what i'm going to talk about is going to either in, is going to involve running ads and promoting. If you believe in the what you're offering, and if you believe in the service that you have, and you're going to make money from it, you should be investing in advertising. You you don't have to spend a whole lot of money if you don't have a whole lot of money, but you should be investing in advertising. I am of the absolute belief that even if if you want to go out and shake a thousand people's hands in one day that's going to be virtually impossible or at least show your face to a thousand people on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You can, you can pretty much show your face to a thousand people for a few bucks a day. That's why I promote advertising because it, it gives you the greatest amount of reach and the greatest amount of exposure to get your message in front of as many people as possible efficiently and effectively. Um, so that's what I would recommend. And it's probably gonna be kind of the answer for a lot of these questions recommend advertising because you can't meet enough people fast enough uh, and i would recommend and i'm sure she's tr and advertising will help you do this advertise to a pool of people outside of your city whatever surrounding cities you have um, you can do your city plus 25 miles how far out would people be willing to drive um, if you know you're doing something that people will drive to in our dance community we do drive some distances. We even drive across states, state lines sometimes, right? Or we fly right. across the country, depending on what you're putting on. Um, so I would recommend advertising and making sure that you can stretch out the, the range, the radius of that ad outside of 25, 30, 50 miles, depending on what you feel people would be willing to drive to, because then that gives you also not a bigger pool of people that you can promote your, your event and your, um, your content to. That's my top recommendation. Um, and just continue to do it. The other big piece of that is don't just do it once because essentially you have to brainwash people. You have to remind them over and over again that you exist and you have a, a product, a service to offer. And over time, people don't make a decision like that. Very few people do. They need to be introduced to it. Then they need to think about it. They need to research it. Then they like, ah, nah. Um, so it's going to take time, but the sooner you start, the, the sooner you'll start seeing results. With that, 
would you say that there would be a difference in marketing across different different dance genres because the way salsa dancers move and come to events versus kizomba or urban kids might different. I was just curious about that. Uh, yes, you would. I would create content if you're trying to reach across different dance genres. Then you need to create content, uh, an ad of some sort that speaks to them and tries to introduce them. Dancers love to dance. Yes, it's different, but it doesn't mean that they may not want to dance. But you need to speak their language. You need to talk to them like, hey, salseros, I know you love salsa. I know you love bachata and whatever you love. Hey, hip hop dancers, I know you love doing your thing. You need to come check what we're doing now. Um, so you actually bring up a good point. Didn't even consider that. Expanding the dance genres that you're advertising to would be fantastic. And then creating content that speaks to them. Because the more the content sounds like it's talking to them, the more they'll stop. The problem with a lot of TV, radio, billboard is that it's one ad for a bunch of people and we're just hoping that one out of 10,000 of them, that ad is relevant to them. Well, on Facebook, you can create an Instagram and everywhere, you can create ads that are more relevant. So if I'm, I'm a dancer and they say, hey, dancers, I'm like, hey, how, how'd they know? How'd they know? We're inviting you to our next event. Come on out. Um, be introduced to this new dance style that's taking over the nation. <laughs> But you get my point, right? If, yeah, if, yeah. I, if I'm a woman, I'm not. If I'm a woman that's pregnant and into yoga and you run an ad that says, hey, hey, ladies, are you into yoga? And oh, I know why I said that. I'm like, How did that populate my brain? Mamacita yeah. yoga. <laughs> hey, pregnant women, uh, are you looking to have a better birth? Come on out to my yoga class. And they're gonna be like, how do they know that I was pregnant? Because you're you have interest. Facebook knows that you're in that interest group. So create an ad that is specifically speaks to them and run some money against it. Put a buck on, a day on it. Okay. So that is a question from the audience. Now we can dig into mine. Let's go. So I broke it down like general marketing, digital marketing questions, and then some website questions <laughs> okay. Let's go. you know the, the panorama really did a number and so i'm pretty much starting all over again and trying to put myself back out there did you say panorama i sure did covid navidad yeah corona the, the okay. panorama. okay 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 I, 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 pandemic i didn't know what you were saying <laughs> yes he's like did she really say panorama? I, like, panorama I don't think i understand okay <laughs> Yes. So with that, it just kind of put a monkey wrench in some things and I took a step back. So um, there was I was reading something and the term was really. <laughs> Hi, Toya. She laughed at that. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, I ran across this term that was really interesting. Social currency or, or concept within the digital age. And like since everything is is digital 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 it isn't there's a lot of stuff that's changed so like what would you suggest for someone to do when they're trying to i guess reintroduce their brand to generate social currency um what would you suggest a person to do a small business to do that's really broad um i would suggest they start promoting their business, putting their face out there on social media. Um, before I answer this question, do you have any questions related to TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, like uh, specific to them? Uh, uh, yeah, because I do have some. Yeah. As I answer this, I can't, I'm going to leak into some of these things. So um, I would encourage you to start creating content. At the end of the day, you need to create content around what it is you do and and run ads this is going to be the core message of everything you need it, even if it's just spending one dollar a day on facebook one dollar a day create a piece of content give and the, the ultimate thing i'm going to the other big thing i'm going to say is give some piece of information give a free recipe encourage uh, just share freely so i mentioned earlier my attorneys they sit on a live for an hour 
hour and a half and they answer people's questions and they're giving their professional advice, their professional opinion on current events and new laws being passed and what are the implications, and they're answering everyone's questions. But they're giving this time that they could be billing, they're giving as a chef, give free recipes, record a video of you walking through the process, uh, introduce people to who you are by sharing what you know, because nobody cares about you. Nobody's going to care about you. They're going to keep scrolling unless you're giving them something of value, something that they can appreciate. Make mm -hmm. them laugh, make them entertain them, uh, answer some questions, educate them. You have to do these things to get them to stop scrolling. No matter if you be, you just started today or if you've been in business for 10 years, you need to stop and give people, stop people's um, scrolling by getting them to stop the thumb, getting them to stop thumb scrolling by giving them something, giving them free stuff so then they can know just how amazing you are. Now, once you do that, you probably don't have a big audience, then I would run ads against it, promote it. Believe in yourself enough to put a few bucks behind it and gain some traction. Um, and the other piece to that would be to run, put those, that content together and put it on Facebook, Facebook Reels, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, and, and TikTok. Because all those four are actually giving away free exposure. You just said Shorts. So on YouTube, don't you have... Because I've seen those and I was like, okay, this is just another reel. Don't you have to have like a certain number of subscribers before you can create a show? No? Not anymore. They open that up. If your, well, video, okay. if your video is vertical yeah. and under 60 seconds, you can just upload it on your from your phone, as of, even from your laptop. I've noticed from your desktop. As long as it's 60 seconds or less and vertical... The, their algorithm will automatically make it a quote unquote short and put it in the short feed. Get out. I'm, I did not know that. So okay. I've been testing this for myself as far as these um, vertical videos, the reels. Oh, yeah. okay. I have been doing it for my personal brand, for my daddy parenting brand. TikTok's kind of giving me hell, but. At the same time, TikTok is where you can go and have absolutely no followers, share a valuable piece of content, your take on a, on a current event or whatever, and post it. TikTok, the possibility of you actually gaining traction there with absolutely zero followers is much greater because of the way their algorithm works than anywhere else. Having said that, Instagram does the same thing. I had a video I posted yesterday that went mini viral. I got, I'm pushing 30,000 views on it. Um, and, it, and I don't have that many people that follow me, but they're mimicking what TikTok is doing. So is YouTube. I had a few videos that took off on YouTube, on, on the shorts. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, Facebook is still figuring out how to integrate that entire feature, but they're also giving away free exposure. So take content, create content that's entertaining, informational, educational. Give it for free, obviously, and post it on those four platforms you can get some traction. Make it vertical. Um, now, the, pr the problem there, the complication there is that you can't just say, I just want to show it to people in Dallas. Their algorithm will feed it to everyone nationally, which is fine because it can help you grow a brand around your subject matter. Um, yeah. So if you do that, I've, I've had people, I know people that have grown a brand and then they can come back locally and promote themselves as, the TikTok star that because mm -hmm. they're TikTok famous now their, their, their content is going to be much richer and they can advertise or promote locally and then start pulling in some people. I've even seen instances where TikTokers, even mildly famous TikTokers, start getting featured in local news. Oh, local uh, celebrity, local chef, uh, uh, TikTok famous chef went famous. Let's talk to her today about how she did it. Right. So, yeah. The lead opportunities are available out there, but it won't be for local businesses so much. Um, that's a wrinkle, but you're going to get exposure and you're going to start getting traction. Okay, I've gotten 
Thank you. I, that- I, I didn't realize that, again, like, like we were talking earlier, so much stuff has changed with how yep. you can everything has changed like even with me trying to post me you know a meal event i'm in the process of trying to do one for juneteenth i can't it's way different so i have to i'm still playing around definitely have to get back in there and immerse yourself because buttons are are different features have been removed other features have been added and the dash everything's different so definitely get into it even going live today was a little complicated for me i haven't done one in six eight months and i was a little confused as to what to do so get into it. It's not too difficult to familiarize yourself, but definitely do it. Real quick, Toya Robles asked a question. She said that she heard that your your content, your videos need to either educate, inspire, or entertain. Absolutely, because that's what gets people to stop. You have to get people to stop. If you don't get people to stop, you're they're going to keep scrolling. And I'll say this: if you're just trying to sell people on your content while you're if that's all you're doing, like come to my thing, buy my my. I want to crack cuss right now. Buy my crap. Buy my stuff. Come. <laughs> but if that's all you're doing, then nobody's gonna pay attention because they don't know you, and you're already asking for the sale. You're already trying to get their money. And then she asked, but the key is consistency, right? Yes, Toya, one hundred percent. And I, I'll say that this is one thing I've learned about life, about marketing, about parenting, about everything. Consistency is the number one key. If you keep at it and you're consistent day in and day out, it doesn't have to be every single day on the reels. It sh- you should try to at least do every single day. TikTok even, a lot of people say that on TikTok, you should be posting four to five times a day. Uh, which, okay. Yeah, but it, it's actually not too hard. I used to think the same thing. It's possible, but it's still time consuming. Because uh, some, some TikToks are like five or 10 seconds. All right, but despite that, consistency is the key. The reason I was able to grow my business is because of consistency. The reason I was able to grow the dance community is because of consistency. People need to be able to depend on you. They need to be able to say, oh, they're still around. Oh, they still know what they're doing. Oh, here's a new piece of content. They're really, they really know their stuff. Consistency is key for the human beings that are consuming the content and for the algorithm. The algorithm needs content to feed people because they're, they're scrolling. <laughs> So the content allows the algorithm to know that you're in the game and the more mm-hmm. consistent you are, the, and the more the algorithm will favor you. And the more you post, I, 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 I can think of it, are you familiar with baseball? Yes, baseball, Tosh? Oh, wait, wait a minute, what is it called? Baseball? The game? Oh, I, thought, oh. I can't hear, I straight, I thought you said baseball. I was like, no, bro, I Bay- don't know. Are you familiar with baseball? Yes, yes. baseball. Yes. So baseball. you get in that bat and you, you take a swing, right? The more content you create and the more consistent that you are, that gives you more opportunities, more at-bats to be on at the plate. That And those at-bats give the algorithm more opportunities to say, oh, let me show this video, right? Um, yeah. if you just post once a week, once a month. You start, uh, it starts to be a little tough, right? Um, But consistency is the key. Absolutely, 100%. If you're going to get in this game and you really want to succeed, figure out a way to be consistent, as consistent as possible. Thank you, Toya. Next question. You have blazed through quite a few of my questions. I'm just trying to go through them and make sure that I'm not missing. Hello, three people. (laughs) Analytics. So how, well, maybe I've answered my own question. Like when it comes to like, there's a, a game, there's a gaggle of information in terms of like what your analytics are, what you're looking at. So what are like, are there any key analytics for you to look at? Like that are the same across the board via YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, IG, like at, mm. What ones are should you pay attention to most or which ones should you try and be more consistent with? Because I know they're they're all valuable in some sort of way, but mm-hmm. for a beginner person, like what would you say is the most important to maybe lock into? One second. Um, it varies depending on the platform. If you do any video, 
views are obviously important. Um, views are important for all videos, not only because it's an indication of interest around that particular subject, but um, for vanity reasons. The more that your videos start to grow, it'll make you feel good, but more important than that, not vanity so much as social proof. We, we give more credence to videos that have a million views than we do to a video that has five views. So if you were to consistently grow the views on your video, when other people come around and see your video, and it's like, oh my goodness, this video got a million views. The perception is, the social proof is that you clearly know what you're talking about and a lot of people know about you. So views, um, specifically on YouTube, on YouTube, Instagram doesn't give you these numbers so much that I've seen. YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, watch time is very important. So not only getting a view is important, but getting a good amount of watch time because they want to make sure, especially in YouTube and TikTok, they want to make sure that people are sticking around. Like they don't just watch three seconds. Technically, that's a view. So if you have a person that has, has a million view video, chances are maybe 10,000, 100,000 of those are actually full watch videos. Three seconds are considered a view. Um, so watch time is a metric that they track because they want to make sure that people are enjoying your videos. You're not just uploading a, a crappy video with no, no information. If people bounce after a few seconds and don't stick around, then the watch time is low. Therefore, that speeds the algorithm and tells it this video is not interesting. People aren't sticking around for it. So that's going to be an important metric to watch. Um, engagement, by far, is one of the big ones that you should look for. Uh, how many people are, uh, they, all the platforms give you some type of engagement rate um, and they, they name it different things. This is where I can get a little complicated, but making sh for the same reason, making sure that your content is rich enough that people want to engage. They want to comment, they want to like, they want to share, those kinds of things. If they're not doing any of that, then those are bad indicators. Those are that tells the algorithm that this video is not very interesting, right? So engagement, definitely on Facebook, that's something that, that it'll give you as far as um, a metric that you should look for. What's the ratio of engagement to actual impressions? Impressions is very important because that lets you know just how many people saw it. Um, I take that back. Reach. Reach is how many people saw it. Okay. So that is, if you see a number that says reach, and it's 1,056. That means 1,056 human beings saw it, or didn't necessarily see it, but they came up on their screen, okay? Um, in, sorry, I'm trying to, impressions, um, then engagement. I'm trying to think of a few others off the top of my head. Those for me are important. Um, the other one I would watch for is just increased people that are liking or following you. You want to continue to get that because for you it's a metric as well as for others because they see that, oh, 100,000 people are following this page. They must know what they're talking about, right? So these are all things to keep in mind, numbers and, and uh, individual metrics. The ultimate metric is sales, uh, dollars in the bank. but until you're able to convert people, until they trust you enough through time, through consistency, through just giving so much, until that time comes, no one's gonna buy from you. So that metric, although very important, um, it, you don't need to have a lot of followers to have a, to be a very profitable business. You have 5,000, 10,000 people locally that follow you, so that's actually quite a bit. If they love your stuff, a good portion of those will eventually start reaching out and taking you up on the offers you have. Another question, can creating a group around your brand be um, helpful or is it a hindrance? I just wondered, look, I've seen some, uh, 
is some brands they have their own group and then within that group you know you have other people that you you know that see all your other stuff but that group could be like your core audience maybe that could be where you can the benefits and and or not benefits of groups attached to your brand so i'm torn on this one because i see a lot of people that do it and it's obviously beneficial um in that you're bringing people into a small group uh they, there's some some feeling of uh exclusivity right <clears throat> mm -hmm. I, I don't i haven't seen that really work for business owners unless they have a team or unless you have a lot of time on your hands to sit there and engage with them and the reason I'm, I'm also more torn is because as it is, you're already giving a, a ton of great content to the free people, to the general audience. So what are you going to give them to encourage them to jump in there? Are you going to be able to create more exclusive content for them? What, mm -hmm. kind, what level of engagement can you give them? Because otherwise it's a waste of time. I have seen way too many groups just fall apart because of that, because there's just no reason to be in there. Uh, and I personally don't don't care for them for my businesses there is value if you're able to consistently give them additional value additional content and make them feel more educated more informed and more entertained um so that's going to be up to the individual but for me if you're a small business chances are you don't have the bandwidth to also jump in there and think of new things to share with them unless the sale could be hey in here, you can ask me questions, your specific questions, and I'll answer them. That could be it. Um, and not create new content, brand new content out of nowhere. Because if it is, most people are struggling to create any content for anyone. So it's, it's a personal thing. Um, I don't I don't subscribe to it. And I, none of my business owners do it either because they're, they're terribly busy. I'm keeping them busy. That, that makes sense. This was actually something I was talking to Charmaine about uh, maybe two or three weeks ago and just trying to uh, figure out if I did do it, how would I do it? And then after that, just trying to figure out what would be the value um, for for me in the space that I'm at the time to the points that you've just made. So, oh, okay. So All Toya right. here. I love what she said. She has a group for her bakery, but they get exclusive activities, discounts, and resources. Brilliant. That's it. Oh, if you're okay. giving them value, like she, that she gets it. That's it right there. Then they feel like there's a reason to join. At this point, there's so many groups we're members of. Yes. And we're always being asked to join this group and that group, or we join, we buy, I, I'm, I buy course memberships. And then they want to add me to a group and then I join hoping to get some added value and there's nothing. So Toya, my hat's off to you because if you're doing that, then you're nurturing them, then them becoming paying customers and clients, however you yes. do, is very high because the value is through the roof. So kudos to you. Good job. Toya is one to watch. Just, just you should follow her. Okay. Okay. She does some wonderful yeah. desserts. So, yep. I hear her. I'm reading. <laughs> what else you got? Um, okay. In terms of like the bells and whistles of, of, yes, it's important to be consistent. Yes, it's important to put content out. In terms of the devices that you use for this content, is that important for small businesses if you balling on a budget so I could have my, you know, uh, my Blackberry <laughs> take away from it's a love, it's a love my Blackberry. On our phones, even a couple of years old, you can create all your content. Something that the, the pandemic has done for us is that it has made the barrier, mm, no, made people's expectations of what content should look like. It lowered the, qual the need for it to be high quality. Okay. Having said that, these things have produced some pretty dang good quality videos and content. Um, you do not need a camera like this. You do not need lighting. You do not need any of that. I was, I, I followed this YouTuber, multimillionaire, uh, and he's invested in a handful of other companies. He's a very, very, very smart man that I respect. But one of the things I've been fascinated by him by is that I feel like he 
purposely is creating crappy quality videos in terms of the actual video and the audio and even himself he'll be in a tank top he'll have like a, a, a nose thing here for what is it that thing they put on your nose oh for yeah for yeah. sleeping or open i feel like he's deliberately doing all that to prove a point and that is that you don't it doesn't matter the, qual the, the quality of the message and the content is what matters. And the guy delivers. He is an outstanding individual when it comes to that. sales, marketing, business, he, psychology. He knows it all. And he's grown his channel to, I think at this point, a few hundred thousand. It might be over a million. I forget. Um, because, but he did it be, with, despite not using quality cameras equipment and he has the money for it he has the team for it um instagram TikTok specifically it's you're encouraged to not actually create high quality edited videos they even tell you don't create an ad create a TikTok. the more real it is you just talking and sharing and, and, and going on and, and giving your 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 opinion or maybe recording you preparing a meal you've seen those videos right where they prepare a meal, like that, 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 and in one minute you have a meal. Those videos go viral, and a lot of them are just done on your phone. You do not need a fancy equipment. Make sure the sun is facing you, or your light is facing you, and that should be good enough. And even then, if the message is on point, if you got something to say that people will appreciate, then they don't care. They won't care. That is you, you know, you're right. I think that's my demon that I wrestle with because I, I want wrestle. let the demon I want it to look perfect. I want no. it to, and and people, they really, you're right. They really do not care. They don't. We don't. As long as you have to say is is, you're asking them to pay attention. You're asking them for a minute, two minutes, five minutes of their time. You're not asking them for money, but what's more important than money? It's not a trick question. What's more important than money? Tosh? Good advice. I mean, I mean. Money, your time. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. That, oh, that's a no-brainer. Right, yeah. Um, time. So asking people to take time out of their day to watch your crappy that's, videos. That's valuable. If you, I, I, so that's even more valuable than the money in their pocket. Right? Sure. So start creating content that people actually, uh, I heard somebody say, that makes makes you feel like, damn, I should have charged for that. If you don't feel like you probably should have charged for that, then it probably isn't good enough. Yikes. Okay. Because at the end of the day, if you're creating content that's less than that, then what kind of people do you think you're going to attract? Or what type of people do you think you're going to retain? They're not going to stick around for you blabbering about nothing. Okay. Hey, Ellen. Thank you for your TED talk. Uh, okay. I'm just saying, like, there is no reason. And I've been, I, I, I have a lot of equipment. And recently when I've been doing this push with the TikToks and the Reels, I've been forcing myself to just use this. Now, granted, it's one of it's the newest one, so I, I have some dang good footage. But I'm forcing myself to just use this because the best camera you have is the one that's on you. It's not going to be big, flashy, big ones, and you don't have to spend the money. No longer have to do that. It's it's a thing of the past. Do yourself a favor. If you know you got something, just start doing it. Start sharing. Like I cannot stress this enough. Question then. Shoot. Um, so in part. In terms of sharing, um, yes, we understand that, you know, just putting something up is important. With all the various social media networks that are out there to put your content on, is there one that you think there should be more of a focus on? And if you say, you know, with whatever answer you give, if you have all of them, what is the best way to get that same message out? Because it's like, I don't want to have to repost to TikTok, then repost to this, and then repost to that. Like, is there, I know Hootsuite was doing something, but I mean, I, 
So go. Those are my questions. I'm about to give you some bad news. <clears throat> uh, okay, I'm would, ready. Give it to well, me, Doc. Some good and some bad. Okay. So you don't drive yourself crazy. Choose two or three. Okay. Uh, focus and get really good on, on at least one. If, if, if you just can't go to two or three, do one and master that one. And the number one I would recommend is Facebook. Mainly because of the advertising. No, they're still the best advertising platform to be able to just target audiences around your interest in your city. Women between 25 and 45 that are pregnant or into pregnancy and are into yoga and live in the wealthiest parts of town. You can do that. Right. You can do that really affordably um, for that reason. But if Facebook is in your jam and maybe you don't want to spend the money. By the way, I'm running ads all over the place. I'm I'm about to start testing TikTok ads. They're not cheap. Well, they are cheap. They just ask you to spend a lot of day. Anyways, um, I would focus on probably TikTok because it's the easiest to create content for and it's the easiest to gain traction. Mm. Post there consistently. Now, the challenge for you will be, and this goes back to the local thing, if you're trying to service people here locally in the area, then I still would encourage Facebook so that way local people, you can advertise to people locally. Yeah. Right? But on TikTok, you can create content, post it, stay consistent. And if it's something like, there's, I, I think I'm going to have to create a TikTok course. I've taken like 20 TikTok courses recently, and I've been pushing my own knowledge around it by experience, like going through it. Like I've, I have a good understanding of way it works, but mm -hmm. I'll create a course until I, I get my stuff popping. Point is though, on TikTok, you can create content and the algorithm will start feeding it to people. You don't even need followers. You need consistency and good quality content. It, and they will help you. And this is actually what the other piece, it will help you validate ideas. So one, you may gain traction. You may start gaining an audience around cooking TikTok. You know, there's cooking TikTok, there's book uh, uh, TikTok books, how do they call it? Like there's various segments of TikTok devoted to various different things that are blowing people up. Singers can go there and, and blow up. Rappers, artists, like people are, they're being segmented. And, and TikTok automatically serves them new content. That's the way the platform is designed. Like they're giving you new content all the time and you're going to find new people. That could be you. Um, but it's a quick way to validate ideas and see how well they, whether it's a good piece of content or not. Because the algorithm is going to give, serve it up for free to a handful of people. The way it works is it serves it up to like 500 people, like for free. And depending on how those people engage, whether they watch or they keep scrolling, that feeds the algorithm and says, nope, this is trash. Don't bother showing it to more people. On Facebook, for the most part, I saw a change recently, but for the most part, they're not going to show it to almost anyone, even if they follow you, unless you advertise. Yes. I've, yeah, it's definitely... It's... So the idea of having followers on Facebook is almost pointless because they only deliver it to 1% or 2% of your audience. So if you have 100, you, one person might see it, right? So going right. back to TikTok, I would recommend go there to try to gain some traction, gain some confidence for yourself, maybe start producing some stuff that, that people are enjoying and then validate ideas, quickly validate ideas. Uh, I would then also recommend Instagram doing reels for the same reason. They're also, they're copying TikTok and, and their algorithm and how they're giving away free impressions, free views. Like I'm getting random people being recommended to me. Oh, you like Tosh, she's a cook, you might like this person. And that could be you. Oh, you like, I don't know, Ramsey? You like Gordon Ramsey? Top tastes like Tasha's here. You might like her, right? But that you need content there. So those are probably the three platforms I would recommend. And I would recommend posting to them via their native app, via their app. I've, I've tested this out with my clients, and I can't help but notice that this a very significant drop in impressions and, and reach when I post from auto schedulers. Really? 
Yes. It's as if the platforms are picking up or like, oh, you're not even posting on our platform. You're not going to be seen by as many people. We're not going to do you that favor. TikTok, I have a client, a couple of clients who easily get two to 3,000 views per, per TikTok. And this is on the low end. They were getting under 100. And I did this for a week or two. I'm like, oh, no. Crap. Um, and then as soon as I stopped auto-scheduling and cross-promoting like that, then all of a sudden within the day, the, uh, the views jump back up. So my, and, and then you want to post in their, in their format and you want to write a caption that's specific to their format because on TikTok, you can't be writing long, long captions. On Facebook, you can write longer ones. On Instagram, you can as well. But you have to write and create the content that's specific for that platform. It's more tedious. This game isn't for the weak. Entre no. Entrepreneurship isn't for the weak. If you mm -hmm. want to be in this game, you have to be willing to invest time, energy, and money. Period. And those are the three platforms I would recommend um, for, for most business owners. If you're, if whoever's watching this in the future, if you're, you're a B2B, if you, you sell services to another business, then I would, I would encourage you to promote consistently on LinkedIn. They are also giving away a ton of free exposure because they're trying to get people to engage. And real quick, I wanted to talk about that. The reason they're giving away this free exposure is because we as, we as creators, we as creators are important and vital to the system. Because if we're not creating good, cool content for people to engage with, then those people are just going to leave your platform. That's not no longer fun. That's why more and more people are going to TikTok because all the fun stuff is happening there. Everyone's just downloading those videos and uploading TikToks to Facebook or to Instagram and even to LinkedIn because the fun is over at TikTok, right? So then that's where the creators are like, they're, it's burgeoning industry of people just being so creative and humorous and political, whatever their, their take is, they need us. So we need to get that exposure, right? It's in their best interest that we blow up so we create more. So that way you, we regular users hang out and then they can run ad dollars. They can put ads in front of us. So that is the overall business model is on Facebook for now, we are the content, right? We are family members. We're posting for us to share, but we are the content. And so is on, on TikTok, but more so the creators. On YouTube, the creators that are creating those videos for you. Um, that we find valuable and if we take those creators away and people that aren't creating them away now what what's the point of me being on this platform okay right so linkedin Shout out to you. So, when tick when you first um there was one something that you posted and he was like all right i heard about this thing called TikTok. you guys were to get on there create like, i remember that yeah it's like wow you see one of the car Definitely. Um, and now it's so good. The algorithm is so good. It's kind of creepy, but it, I, I understand yeah. the, the basic science behind it. It's so good at giving stuff that you're going to enjoy because they're picking up on a lot of cues that you do that you don't know. Um, and very quickly giving the, the algorithm indicators like, oh, he's not interested in kayaking because as soon as I see a kayak, you scroll. They're picking up on, like, if you stop for two seconds, they're like, oh, interested? Not, like, they literally, the algorithm is that smart that within a day, you can pretty much guarantee that almost every video that comes through your feed will be things that you're interested in, even though you didn't tell it. That's cool and creepy at the same time. Right. Because we're always giving away, <laughs> we're always giving away indicators about what we're into. Well, this algorithm and this app has mastered it. So... To, the, to make my final point on that is I told you that they, were, they started gaining in popularity and it got so good and so popular that everyone is copying them and their format. Yeah. So get on it. If you don't do it on TikTok, do it on Instagram. If you don't do it on Instagram, do it on YouTube. But I would recommend do it on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And TikTok. You can repurpose those. Yeah, you can definitely repurpose those. Vertical. Um, real quick, Toya says, what about the Facebook business suite that cross posts for you? That one is theirs. That one, you're good. 
that that's not that's not a problem but there's a lot of platforms out there that will post to everything for you like your hootsuite um i had another one that i found that i really liked that allowed me to uh, auto post to, to TikTok. um there's a bunch of them uh, I, forget, I think it's metric metrical is what allows you to post but and schedule it out for the whole month yeah i loved it because i have a lot of stuff i had to post for my clients only to find out that the reach was being dropped the algorithm clearly doesn't like it uh so i've had to stop which i hate it because you have to do it manually what you have to do for yourself i also have to do for my clients two or three times a day um but they pay me well so i just suck it up <laughs> Okay. I there I did have um some other people who are super super beginners ha ask me some questions and so um I would love for you to answer. So they there's a person she's just starting out and um she doesn't have she was curious to know like what let me see what are a few affordable sites one can use to to create a website if they're balling on the budget we gotta crawl before we walk right that was one um see the problem is what is affordable to individuals um that's what you're right you are right uh, that that's, that's right. something i've learned in life is what's affordable is, is variable it, it's relative to the individual i will assume they mean really really cheap it's gonna be tough you can find some Weebly's out there, uh, Squarespace, but I think they're a little, they're a little prettier, nicer. Um, and I'm trying to recommend platforms that allow you to launch a website with templates already uh, available to you, so you can literally pick and then customize a bit and, and be able to launch. Um, those would be the platforms I recommend. The problem from a marketing point of view, and obviously they're just getting started, so I would start there. Um, from a marketing point of view, I've picked up peep clients over the years that are on Weebly or on a GoDaddy hosted website that they launched for them that was for free or whatever. Those sites are free for a reason and they're cheap for a reason. They allow very little actual customization and, and uh, permissions to get into the back end and do some, some things on the marketing side to add tracking, to add analytics, blah, blah. Like, I, it, it, it became a nightmare. However, mm. if you're just getting started, then I would go there. Weebly, and I feel like there's another one that's on that level of just affordability and being able to launch something to at least have a presence, would be that would be one of my top recommendations for that. A little higher up would be a Squarespace. Is that, I think that's what they're called. They're really beautiful, elegant. Um, out of the box, you could probably launch a really pretty site. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be hosted by them. That's a little more. Um, and those would probably be it. I feel like there's one more. I can't think of it right now. That is, is still okay. I mean, go to GoDaddy. Your, your, your host will have your GoDaddy. Uh, that's the only one I can think of right now. Um, they give you, like, launch a free website. That kind of feature. So that's... Hopefully I've answered that question. Uh, those are out there. You can launch. You can have a presence. If you're just getting started, I would not stress about it. Just I actually told this to a client today who might hire me. Um, I told him, don't worry about the website. Not now. But let's just push. I create landing pages. But you don't need a website. We're going to keep everybody on the platform. And we're going to just try to get them to engage and call. Um, that was another question. You said landing page. Go back to that. That's something else. So uh -huh. do you know what a landing page is? Actually, let me answer that. <laughs> I'll just tell the general public. A landing page is a simple one-page website. Uh, for me, in the marketing world, it, it refers to a page, a one-page website that literally has nothing but maybe a headline, uh, a few words, more than likely a video, and a button that says call now or visit now or claim the coupon. Landing pages tend to be really simple and remove all navigation because... We're really distracted, and if you here's a here's a hot tip: if you have if you're running an ad and you send them to your website and your website's a mess and you got all types of stuff going on, they're gonna land there and be confused and um, bounce. Landing pages are really good because if you run an ad 
and you ask them to, you know, for more information, they go to a landing page. And on that landing page, you have information very relevant to that ad. It's in congruence with what you just were talking about. Then they're more than likely actually going to read what was there, watch the video and probably give you a call. But if you push them to your general website, like there's all types of buttons and graphics and this and that. A confused mind doesn't buy. They're going to bounce. They're not, they're, they, don't even, they don't even know if they're on the right place and they're going to leave. Landing page is just a really simple, elegant, to the point page. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going down my other questions. You've pretty, like, you flowed into like <laughs> lots of my questions already. Good. Da, 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 da. Yeah, because when you said 17, man, like, if, I answer, if everyone takes me 10 minutes or 20, I'll be here. Like, now, nah, you've covered, you have definitely it all, covered. It all kind of ties together. Goes so together, I, yeah. would, What else you got? Well, we already went over, I was asking about the various platforms that you think are best to use. You gave me your top four. We talked a little bit about analytics. We don't have to have a sexy camera to <laughs> to put out some quality content. Go go through TikTok or go through your Instagram uh, Reels feed, and you're gonna see what I mean. You're gonna find. Oh yeah, I'm, I do. I'm, people and are in there. Some of those videos are getting millions of views. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because they're entertaining, and because the algorithm is like they're especially on on, on Instagram. A lot of people are pissed, especially photographers, because they're putting more weight on video now. It used to be just a photography site, photo site. And right, it and it's moving away from that. No, because they're, they're, they're copying TikTok. That's where the money is, that's where the attention is. And frankly, that's what we want. Because we're doing that over there, they're like, oh, that's what our users want. So let's do that here. Now you can still do photos and whatnot, but video is, the, and that, I guess that could be another big tip. If you're not doing video, you're missing out. And I'm not even going to get into the ad side. What video? Well, actually, I will. Video a lot more. There's a quite a few ways I could go about this. More people are willing to sit and watch a one-minute video than read two paragraphs. That's a shame. I'm sorry. It is. <laughs> That's the reality. Not not a hundred, yeah. but more people are willing to sit there and maybe even watch a two-minute video. Because they're, it's they're, it's animated, it's video, it's people talking. They're right. It's it's more engaging than sitting and, and reading. Okay, that's number one. Number two, because of that, all the platforms are are pre all the platforms algorithms are pref putting preference in videos, right? Um, because we like them, so they're just doing us a favor. And everyone's mad at social media for giving us what we want. I mean, we as human beings are the problem. Um, but having said that, <laughs> on the advertising side, if you do videos, there you're able to do so much more with it. You can run ads to people that watch three seconds of a video. You can run, like, who have already watched three seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, or, like, say, I want to run a follow up ad to people that watch 50% of this last video. So you can segment them and run ads to those individuals. How much more relevant do you think that video will be for them? How much more engaged do you think it will, they will be if they see another video having engaged with the previous one more, more than half? They're going to be much more engaged. They're going to be like, oh, it's him again. Great. I wanted to hear from him. So these are things that there's a lot of, I can get into a lot of other things that video allows you to do on the ad side that you cannot do with a regular text post or a regular graphic. Got it. You can retarget people and re-engage them since they showed interest and watched that video that you posted last week. So my secret in the dance community is I post a lot of videos and if anybody has watched even a portion of them, I put them in an audience, a big bucket of people that have watched at least three seconds or 10 seconds and I show them more videos so, and the idea being to persuade them that, hey, dude, you need to come eventually. I keep hitting them with more and more videos, more and more content. And frankly, it's just fun to come to our events. 
but we make it irresistible and I'm making it irresistible by continuously putting more content in front of them. And that's what you need to do as brands. So with, when it comes to your, to your various pages, um, your social media presence, would you say that the, that your page should be set up a certain way should or shouldn't, there should be things that you should, there are things that you need to have there and some, some bits and pieces of information that you shouldn't. I heard someone say something like that. It was like, okay, if you have this sort of social media page, make sure you have this, this, and this. Are there, is it really that serious? I mean, if you're on the internet, you're pretty screwed already um, in terms of privacy. But I would, <laughs> the only thing I would, <laughs> the only thing I would say I, that I think answers that is don't put anything personal overly no, no, no. your address I mean, like, what do you I mean? don't mean i don't mean things like you should uh, are there are there pieces of information that you should avoid having there i mean in terms of making things succinct and attractive and need to know things that you should have on your on your facebook page i think it's going to be you know, i'm sorry i think it's going to be dependent on on you and your business uh, you have you have a chef business right you have a cooking and catering business I would not post anything political um, I mean unless you just there's something like Black History Month I don't know if that's political but you know what I'm saying if you have a political page a page that leans in that direction then go political that's your job that's what you made your job right um, mm -hmm. I, I would say stay on topic and get off only with intention. Like, obviously, when things pop off and you want to speak to things that are going on in the real world, then speak to them and, and how it relates to you or how maybe you're supporting, you know, like women's rights or whatnot, right? That would be the extent of what I would say limit it. Uh, but even then, it's up to you because you own the page. It's whatever makes sense for the business, they're subscribing to you as a chef, right? They want to know about all things cooking and catering and whatnot. So if you start talking to me about sports, there's a, uh, that's where I would be careful. But outside of that, I can't think of anything like, oh no, don't do this or don't do that. Okay. I'm going back to my list of questions. Fantastic. You really, you, you nailed it. Oh, <laughs> you got a lot. You've covered everything. I thought I was going to have, you know, some, what about this? You got me. Oh, you know what? When it comes to your audience, like at the end of the day, you know, I, I would say that my audience is, you know, people who like to cook, but I've read some articles and they talk about like how how do you formulate your target target audience? Like how do you where does it start? Do you as a business owner you just focus on the people that you care about having their attention? Or, you know, once I start looking at analytics, it kind of it can that can change what your target audience is. Am I right or am I wrong? Well, uh, this is kind of a meaty question. You ideally should know who your target audience is. Who's going to buy from you? Because at the end of the day, you're trying to sell something, right? True. So who's going to be your buyer? Having said that, your buyer invariably is anyone that eats food. Facts. I would focus. So this brings me to a term I, 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 I created and I've said many times before. I would focus for you on getting an audience of people that are into food, into fine, whatever it is that you call this, and get an audience that's so big. I call it the Kim K effect. And and take and, and benefit from the Kim K effect. Kim K and all her brethren or sister, I don't know, her siblings have massive audiences. When you have a massive audience, you can sell them anything. Kim K has who knows how many businesses at this point and has ownership in them because of her audience. 
If someone approaches her even about promoting their business, it costs like $100,000 or more per Instagram post for her to promote your thing. Oh, gosh. Right? But that's because of the massive audience that she has. Coming back to you. You don't need that many people. But if you had a few thousand, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 of people that love food and creative ways to prepare food or healthy food, and you were growing that audience, and that's what I would focus on, that type of audience, they invariably, a good portion of them will turn into fanatics for you. And you're, they're going to love your personality. Make sure your personality is coming out in the content because they can get food anywhere or they can learn from anyone. But why are they going to learn from you? Facts. T, tenacious. We need to see more of that. Right? Your personality and, and while you're preparing um, and create this massive audience of people that are just into food. Um, they're foodies, self-described foodies. You can probably target them on Facebook. Foodies. Um, and just go wide. So then going back to TikTok, that might be the best interest. So that way, you go so wide, you can push those people, especially if they're local, over to Facebook and over to any other platform. And then sell to them. So go a little wider. Um, Mama Sita Yoga here is like she just needs to target women between certain ages because eventually they may get pregnant. You know, uh, she right. does yoga. She does uh, other stuff, but she's targeting prenatal uh, pregnant women. Well, they're only pregnant for a certain amount of time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so then, they fall, then they fall out of that audience and that target. Right. So now they no longer can be her client. So that she has this little window. But doesn't mean that she can't keep promoting and, and growing her audience nationally and be the mama seat, the, the, the prenatal expert in the entire country. And when they, they're looking for someone locally, guess who they're going to find? Her. Same with you. You could have a national brand, go wide, include people that are just food. That's what I would do is foodies or whatever self-described name they've given themselves, how they self-identify. Um, and then... Out of that, you're going to have people that are like, how can I pay you? Can I pay you to uh, remotely cook for me or teach me how to do this or do that? Or I'm in Dallas. Can you do this for me? Right. Those are the types of things that I would consider in terms of your audience uh, and who you're targeting. I would like your advice on this. So it's like a gift and a curse. So I cook, you know, I can prepare things. However, I also have a nutrition background. So in terms of like pushing things out to people, um, of course, the, the biggest focus is, you know, I'm going to make this food for you. But other things or other talents that I may have that are that are still related to food. How would you how would you um, suggest I fold that into what I do or eventually broaden that out to another service that I could offer without like overwhelming myself. Cause it's like someone was today, someone was like, Oh, you, you can do meal prep. I was like, yeah, I have this here is a menu, but if you need keto, I can do it. If you want something that's vegan, I'm your girl. If it's vegetarian, I can do it. If you, if it's for a small child, Toddlers, prenatal, postpartum women, if they're, if they're specific guys, like all of that kind of stuff, I have that expertise, but I don't always know the best way to put that out there without confusing the audience because they come here because they know, all right, she does meal prep and she can do catering things, but there's some other stuff that she can do too. That's a very complicated question. I would try to give you the advice I would give someone that would be paying me. Oh, snap. Free game. I'm taking it. I was worth the game. Um, I would say pick one. Get that to be successful because it is overwhelming because now you're having to create content for two different ones, right? Right. I would focus on creating that massive audience around one. Ideally, one that's easier, creating products around that, a killer offer around that, um, and get it to be profitable. Get it to a place where you can systematize it, when you can count on it, deliver it, where you can count on 
the money that you're going to get because the more you, you you talk about it, the better you become at it, the better, the, the, the more of an expert you are in that field and the perception of others that are consuming your content. If you start to do everything, they are, they're going to be like, well, what do you focus on? What are you good at? What can I call you for? Right? Um, Because that's what you can charge the most for. When you're the specialist at someone, you don't, who would you rather get, get brain surgery from a brain specialist or from a general practitioner? They're both doctors. Right? Right. So be a specialist in one, master that, master the marketing, master the messaging, uh, master the consistent, like get all that down and also master the profitability. Is this profitable? Can you make this profitable? Can you bring in enough people every month to pay the bills, pay everything? Is that possible? And once you figure that out, if you can do it in one thing, do it in one thing. Having said that, once you have a conversation with them, what you can do is have it as part of your upsell. Consulting on the nutritionist side, whatever the, or whatever it is that that nutritionist does, you definitely can bundle that in there. And I'm going to back up a little bit. Even in within the, uh, the realm of the cooking, being a nutritionist is a vital skill, yes? So in your messaging, in your the, the content that you put out there, I would include that. Are you like a certified nutritionist or something? No, I'm working on my uh, my credentials, but but my background, I've done it. Okay. I have so, the, the experience. So we'll put that. Food prepared, you know, delicious, tasty, whatever food prepared with love, passion, and with uh, a care for your nutrition as an experienced nutritionist, right? Mm-hmm kind of put that in your messaging that adds more validity, more, uh, more uh, expert, more weight. Yes. Right. Um, But as far as selling it as a service, I would bundle it into the conversation once you have them, like maybe upsell them. Like I can also do this for you for X amount. If you're interested, then if, because if they're asking you to prepare, maybe they're interested in whatever nutritionist service you have. Um, until you're able to make that something you can devote more time to. Right. Okay. Make it that's... profitable and, and, and figure that out before you, because that's two big spaces to be in. It's, it's broad. It and, is really, really broad. And trying to create content that the, the masses want and answering all those questions and while also having a regular job, damn near impossible. Yahtzee. Okay. Got it? Yeah. One more question. You got any more? Then I got to eat. <laughs> no, I don't. I you, I have some some solid takeaways, and I was able to take some really good notes. And I can't wait to watch the playback so that oh, cool. whatever notes I missed, I can put them back. Yeah, because you're paying attention. Carla says, by the way, she commented in here. She says, "Start with what you're most passionate about cooking." Okay. Something that you can get into. People need to be like excited to watch you because it's not just about the food it's about the preparation it's about the person um there's a guy uh, i see the guy on on uh, who grew incredibly famous on instagram i think he's called falaya flaya he chops them he gets like clips of nba sports highlights or just highlights and then yeah. he overdubs them with his personality like yeah watch out now dunk on your face like he just adds his personality and has you laughing so hard while just That's you. Of, that I have like the videos that you're talking about, like I, I do. I have videos that I've oh, made like I can see you doing I can see right, sixty I, second TikToks where you make a meal in sixty seconds, bang, 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 mm-hmm. quick clips, and then you talk over it like boom, bah, slap, picture this, oh ooh. now voila. Where's the tutorial on how to do that? I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not delayed. <laughs> hey. I'm smart, yo. But when it comes to like really the technical, and it isn't that technical because you, it's, you girl, YouTube has all the answers. Okay, then I will go all to the, the, I'll get in the YouTube screets and watch a couple tutorials because I bet right now on my phone I do I have 
roasted fish, this snack that'll make you want to fight somebody. All these things, I have it there, but just I don't know how to put them together. This is my challenge to you, T, and to everyone else. Go to TikTok, find the thing that you're interested in, do a search for cooking or whatever, start scrolling. Find yourself stopping on things. Then ask yourself, why did I just stop? What, what about this particular video compelled me to stop? And what did I take away? Did I laugh? Did I feel educated, right? And what style is it? How did they, is it a talking head video? Is it them, them just talking? Is it what I just described to you? Um, those videos get a lot of views because they're just like, they're, their mouth starts watering and they're bang, bang. On Instagram, on the reels and TikToks, the faster you cut, the better. Those are the ones that are like, because you go from unzipping to throwing to sizzling to flipping to plate. Boom, 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 boom. And like, wow. Um, but scroll through there and see what they're doing and see what you can pick up. And the biggest, here's the other big tip is go there and start figuring out how you can copy them. Copy like an artist. How can I grab this idea with this sound of the music matters and the style yeah. they did it in? and then do it for yourself copy like an artist that's what everyone is doing and writing trends and you need to ride the trend but for cooking from your point of view with your footage okay there's so much room for growth it's actually impossible not to grow unless you just don't do the work okay and it, it takes time like to be fair um start putting some time into it and you'll be surprised just how much traction you can gain. Um, and then grab that content and post it on Facebook. And run some ads to it because you know that it's good. TikTok just said it, it's good. That's my validation. Make okay. it happen. Okay. Well, as long as it's sexy and it's about food and it's funny, yeah. make, that's make, what I give a damn. Make food sexy. Ah. Yes. I don't like struggle plates. And I see hmm. some Say that. stuff and they Say that are struggling. In the video. And they are taking W's. And I'm like, oh this food God. is ugly, yo. <laughs> but people love it. Make so. them talk about that. Say that in a video. Yes. Dude, why is your food so ugly? Nothing that T does is ugly. My, my food okay. is sexy. It'd be banging. Damn. Right? It is. It, it do be banging. Like, come I'm on. Like, <laughs> or like you can do a video of you reacting to some of those videos. Like, oh my God. Like, that's horrible. That looks disgusting. Those videos, the reaction videos, kill. They do. Yeah, they do. They kill. We, why do we, we love watching people react to things. We're a sick society, but it works. So go do it. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. I bet this, that's my homework and my ch challenge. Thank you. Tenacious T. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really. Sorry. I keep looking down here. So my bad. I know. Same, same here. Like, where am I looking? Where am I looking? Right. <laughs> Struggle play, right? See, thank you, to Toya. Tell her. Tell her. Keep her accountable. Um, thank you, T, for this. I really appreciate it. Um, an hour and 20 minutes. Oh, uh, snap. Right? We're talking, we're going. Uh, I'm going to chop this up. I'm going to put it out there. I'm going. This is going to be content that I'm putting on my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram, my, I'm sorry, my Instagram, YouTube, all, everywhere. But specifically those channels that I mentioned to you that have the vertical videos. They're going there. Okay. Just push. If you're chopping, you should chop it and screw it to some Swisher House. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that would be funny. Mm -hmm. No. That's cool. I like that. I might call, I might call the package the chopped and screwed package. For people. That's what I'm talking about. Right? See, Thank you, Ellen. Yes. Well, that's how collaboration happens when you ping off of each other. I'm like, this, I like that actually because it also speaks to yes, my I, I, background. That would, yes, and some great music in the back. You know, yep. mute a little bit. Yeah, that would be good. Before we leave, Alan. Uh, Alan Allen here. He's he's homie that's moving from San Diego to teach Kizomba here in Dallas. He's gonna be a dancer. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, so yeah. he's in, he's in the joint. But he's really good with memes. Dude, yes. the memes to me, TikTok is just memes via video. Yeah, they're action. Action they're packed action, memes. They're acted out. Um 
if, and if you can if you can come up with a good meme or if you see a good meme and you can act it out as yourself and yourself like boy what you think no, you know what i'm saying those are going to kill because the, the meme has already proven to work it's hilarious so if you can act it out it doesn't have to be great you don't have to be a great actor you can be cheesy but TikTok will blow up that's what one of the angles that i'm looking to take is there any, any meme that I come across? I'm like, what can, how can I spin that and make it a video, a TikTok? So anyways, that's my last observation that I'll be sharing because it's it's one that I'm about to rock. Because uh, on my personal stuff, I'm doing funny, more uh, TikTok, more humorous, a little more aggressive too. But it's me um, talking and it's something that I haven't done much recently. But that's on my you personal. I like to say with the STV, I love aggressive. Like, dads, get off your ass and be a better daddy. Stop being a That's jerk. Stop being a jerk. Don't be a rich. Anywho, I could keep talking forever. I'm starving. I'm getting a headache, but it's not you. Thank you. I love you. I'm going to take you too. I appreciate you. Thank you to all that attended. It meant the world to me. Uh, expect some short form clips coming soon. I appreciate all of you. Bye bye. Bye, Alan and Toya and T. Have a good day. Bye.